a queen of 90s country, today on the Music Universe Podcast. Hey, Matt, you uh, staying sane yet? Ooh, staying sane? Trying to. <laughs> How about that you? Was, that was my trick there. Yeah, not too bad. You know, just keeping busy as much as I can. Well, you know, how are the dogs doing? <laughs> <laughs> They're not doing too bad. They're, uh, you know, they, they enjoy their walk whenever I take them on it. But if I touch that leash, even though they're outside a lot because they love being outside during the day, once I touch that leash, oh, they're all ears. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You, you're you screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I, I have to I have to take them. So my daughter and I usually walk them around the block and. We walk three out of the five because that's about all I can handle. And, um, you know, well, we do it and then they go about their day and I go on about mine, you know. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, our animals here are just lounging around. We have four cats here at the house and they provide some much needed escapism whenever they feel like being silly. Unfortunately, <laughs> can't take them outside on walks, but we do get cats that come in, uh, we have a, a bowl outside on our back porch and the neighborhood cats kind of come in and they have names. Not that we named them, we just know who, who they are from neighbors and stuff. So, um, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, just look, look for the beacons of sanity <laughs> during yeah. all of this. That's all you can do. And uh, we, you know, we've had a lot of great guests on this show and we have another one that actually released uh, her new album, Looking for a Feeling on um april 24th and it's it's pam tillis most people oh. will recognize the voice they'll also recognize of course the name but the songs you know cleopatra queen of denial shake the sugar tree maybe it was memphis a lot of great hits in the 90s and we briefly touch about you know the the difference between uh, 90s resurgence of then and now and uh we mostly talk about her her new project and what she's doing to, to try to keep us sane during the quarantine. We're going to listen to the interview, but I have a Pam Tillis story that I actually meant to ask her about and tell her about, uh, but I will mention it after this interview. So, Pam, if you're listening, don't click away when the interview's over, because uh, unless I for somehow talk to you between now and, and when it airs, I want you to hear this story. Pam Tillis, welcome to the Music Universe podcast. We are so excited to have you and so thrilled for this new album. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing pretty good for a Monday. Just, uh, <laughs> you know, I think if there's one thing this whole situation is teaching us, it's kind of try to stay a little bit more in the moment and, and uh, yeah, just kind of trying to go with it, go with the flow. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. We are so, so excited to have you. What have you been doing uh, during this downtime? Uh, how have you been? Uh, obviously, you have the new album, but what else have you been doing uh, to take advantage of this time at home? <laughs> well, like a lot of people, <laughs> I, I seem to have rekindled a, uh, a serious love affair with my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> My husband, uh, I, we've been together for 18 years, and for uh -huh. the first 16, I did the cooking, and he's all of a sudden um, become completely fascinated with learning how to bake, and uh, so I, you know, for better or for worse, I'm the person that ends up, you know, <laughs> <laughs> being, the, being the taste tester. How's the taste uh, testing working out? Pretty damn good. <laughs> <laughs> we've got yeah. we've got sourdough of all kinds and uh, and pizza dough and and we've had biscuits and uh, the other day he um, we were on a hamburger buns every now like maybe every couple of weeks we'll decide a, a burger sounds good and we didn't have hamburger buns he hauled off and made made some buns and it's pretty funny he's made kombucha i've made sprouts there's all kind you know grew sprouts there's all kinds of uh things that we never did you know before it's like you all of a sudden you start getting in touch with these domestic art arts and uh i planted an herb garden 
and that that, that that it's just you know what the upside of this very hard times for a lot of people and and we're out of work too you know we're in the same mm-hmm. you know we're it's just crazy but um usually this time of year i would be really busy on the road and i'm there's certain seasons that don't last a long time and that you know nashville's a four season town Mm -hmm. but um with a change in weather patterns spring and fall have gotten shorter so i can't tell you how many years i will miss either spring or fall or both and to be home um tennessee in the spring's a pretty pretty beautiful place and we had a lot of rain um of course we did have a tornado that's a bummer that's another topic but but the amount of rain man one morning i looked up I woke up and I looked outside my back, you know, my window that looks into my backyard. And for a moment, I thought maybe I was dreaming and I was looking at Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> it just looked so green. It was unbelievable. So so that part has been a, a real balm for my soul during this really hard time. Uh, and with this new album, Looking for a Feeling, you know, was there a disco? Yeah, we've been doing some promotion for that. Of course, it's a real weird thing to come out with a new record in the middle of a pandemic, but <laughs> we've been doing what we can, and I appreciate you guys that wanting to talk to me today. I think you need it, right? Yeah. Right, buddy? Right, Pam? I, I think you need it. I yeah. think we need new music, especially in this time. You know, that's the that's the good side of it, for sure. Yeah, and uh, you typically would be uh, obviously doing, you know, more than just virtual promoting at this point. But uh, what, uh, how have, uh, how has your touring been affected? Like, when was your last show and how many shows, you know, ideally have you lost because of this? And are they going to be uh, hopefully oh, postponed? Oh, my word. You know, I don't want to say any big sob story, but, you know, it's it's pretty, it's pretty brutal. I try not, I try not to do the math. Mm-hmm. because you just can't go there you can't and on, on a certain level you can't right you know you just have to go okay well i can eat and, and uh you know you just try to and, and then there's people that are, have such so much more of a difficult time and i don't have little kids home and i'm not worried about school and and i don't you know my, both my parents are gone i'm not worried about that so i i consider myself fortunate but my tour year just got gutted hopefully we will um you know there may be some shows in the fall there's a there's a lot of things that have gotten pushed to the fall that um that are holding in there you know but we'll see it's mm-hmm. good well for now it's Let's focus on that new music. Any plans to do anything over Facebook or live to celebrate this new music, to get it out uh, for people to hear it? Actually, we're going to do, and we have been doing some online uh, things here and there, some, some shows. I'm doing a guest, I think, for CMT coming up here. Uh, hang on. Got his headphones on. Uh, I'd have to consult the calendar, but... Uh, there's going to be some kind of star-studded thing uh, on CMT coming up, uh, an online thing. Ooh. So you can be looking for that. We'll have that advertised on Facebook. But yeah, we're going to do a. I think we're going to do like a 45-minute uh, concert uh, on the day the record comes out, and we're going to bring. I haven't played with my trio or my band in gosh, a good two, two and a half months, and uh, we're just going to. I'm going to get a couple of the gals in my band over and we're just going to spread out. <laughs> we're going to get on the opposite <laughs> side of the room and, and, and at least do a trio show and that'll be good. So that'll be, uh, you know, advertised on my Facebook and Instagram and all that. Yeah. And your trio uh, typically consists of Terry Clark and Susie Boggess. What's that like to uh, tour with? Them? Well, actually that is a, that's a package. My trio is a, uh, coincidentally enough also two two women uh that's just you know when i just do my solo thing i have a a, and i do want to talk about Susie and terry in a minute because that's been a a a total blast but my uh, acoustic trio pam tillis acoustic trio uh is uh, a gal named Haley sullivan uh Mm -hmm. she plays uh 
piano and guitar and sings, and then uh, Ivy Phillips, who plays uh, just about everything. <laughs> and they're very, very, very young. I feel like a den, the den mother of country music. Uh, I feel like the, the mama hen with the little chicks following along behind them. But they're stellar musicians, and their age belies their uh, their virtuosity. So, anyway, nice. so that's what that's going to be. But, but for the last two and a half years or so, I, I have done a lots of shows with Susie Boggess and Terry Clark, and that's called Chicks with Hits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you guys got a ton between the three of you, so that's got to be a great show. Do you guys, um, I guess, just come out and play each other's songs with each other? Yeah, we do. We back each other up, and uh, both of the ladies are uh, they're really good guitar players. And uh, and then Susie and I, uh, Terry's got a little stomp box, you know, so she'll kick a little bit of kick drum on that thing, and I play a mean cowbell. I have a little percussion, <laughs> a little mini percussion kit, and Susie's got a little hi hat. And I've uh, I even picked up the bass for a couple of songs, and it's oh, wow. been a blast. Yeah, yeah. It, my uh, my husband got me a, a beautiful. Uh, he got me a seafoam green uh, Starfire bass like Carol Kay played, and I'm like, mm. watch me go, <laughs> stand back. Oh, that's gotta be a. <laughs> A treat to see all that. We we've got to check that out whenever it comes uh, comes uh, around again because uh, that that sounds like a blast for sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So this year marks twenty years. Uh, sorry to hop all over your career, but we had the, the limited time with you, and we're such big fans. We want to we kind of want to touch on everything. And this year marks your twentieth year as a Grand Ole Opry member. I mean. How does that feel? What's that like? Twenty years on, as a, as an Opry member. Well, I don't know how old you are, but uh, <laughs> I tell you what, it'll sneak up on you. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it it doesn't seem like that long ago, and then there's moments where it feels like another lifetime ago. So it's really it's really funny. Um, but you know, I'm super proud to be a part of that institution. And um, it's fantastic to be a part of that family. It's a better word for it. Um, I, I don't know. Have you had an opportunity to see? You know, it's on uh, cable now. There's Circle TV. So that's yes. fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's about time they got that going again. Cause <laughs> yeah. A lot of people will. Just, so it's, it's a timely, timely thing. So that's a milestone. And then... Uh, a, a huge milestone for me uh, it comes up next year uh, in 2021. I'll hit my 30th year of touring, so 30 years on the road in 2021, and uh, in 2022 will be you know 30 years since Memphis, maybe it's Memphis came out. So I'm going to be having some big celebrations over the next couple years. Yeah, and that that song is so timeless. The resurgence of '90s country has just come back in in the last few years. What what's it like then compared to now? The songwriting, I think, was a little bit more. It was simpler, you know. It's less mm-hmm. wordy, um, more melodic, maybe a little bit. I mean, it's definitely changed. Another big thread that weaves through the album is is '70s. Uh, a lot of yeah. '70s. Influences. Yeah, you can see that on the album cover. <laughs> yeah, Love yeah, we went cover. for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what influences? Talk about those. It's funny how things do come full circle, though. Um, I, I, if I had to pigeonhole the record a little bit, I'd say it's a, you know, kind of an uh, an Americana sounding record. And the interesting thing about uh, Americana is uh, is how much influence 70s uh, rock and country has had on Americana. And, you know, for me, that's a part of my musical story. I, I kind of came of age and a real, um, my formative time when I was really getting serious about music, really playing guitar all the time and entertaining my friends and, and, and really writing, starting to write songs a lot 
was in the was in the late seventies, and uh, Nashville at that time was a a real melting pot. The, you know, country and rock were really kind of happily coexisting. We yeah. had uh, Rodney Crowell writing songs and Guy Clark, and you had Neil Young coming to town to record, and uh, of course, Emmy Lou and Graham Parsons were huge, and even Charlie Daniels played rock festivals, you know, and um, and then Southern Rock was huge, the Allman Brothers, uh, and ZZ Top, and Marshall Tucker Band, and we, of course, the, the ubiquitous Leonard Skinner. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> that was all the music. And then and then we loved, you know, the Stones and Led Zeppelin. And it was just a real musical free-for-all. And, um, mm-hmm. and you know, it's a huge Joni Mitchell fan. So you, you hear a lot of those subtle, it's subtle, but there's a lot of those influences on this record. Yeah, and you also produced it and you're releasing it uh, once again on your own uh, Stellar Cat Records. Tell us what, uh, what it's like to take on that role uh where you're you're the label and the producer well um if things get if things go wrong you got nobody to blame but yourself (laughs) 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 it really cuts down on the bitching (laughs) (laughs) i love i like that (laughs) that's a good line No, if I, you know, my husband is a really good businessman, and uh, if he wasn't, he's the guy with the spreadsheet, you know, and if it wasn't mm-hmm. for him, I couldn't do it, but, um, and he grew up in Nashville, and he grew up um, in the music business, and so, you know, we, we it's, it's a pretty, it's a mom and pop uh, organization, but uh, he's pro too, I don't mean to belittle his uh, his skills but that's why we can do it you know and we've been lucky at least up until now now with the advent of everything being you know streamed uh so far with every project we've done we've been in the black of course the business model's changing a lot you know now it's uh mm-hmm. yeah. you almost use uh records like a loss leader like a as a form of advertisement yeah see what happens you know we 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 you know, if we were just in it for the money, we'd probably do something else. Oh, yeah, totally. So what we love to talk about here is the genesis of albums, how they come to be, how that process starts. Where did this new record start for you? And uh, take us on that journey with you a little bit, if you don't mind. There's a saying that we've had forever in Nashville called It All Begins With a Song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It has to be a song that kind of propels you into the studio, you know, or a bag mm-hmm. of songs. And I, uh, because I've been so active with my touring, I haven't written as much in the last few years. So that, that little bag was a little bit slower to get, get full, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, right. once I had a certain amount of songs that I was really starting to want to play live and and some of these songs I've actually been performing live for a little bit. And it was just time, you know. I just had these songs that I felt good about. And uh, the album happened over a period of time, and that was both difficult and I'm glad it went down that way. I started, I actually started recording the song, in, uh, I mean the album, at the end of 2016. I had a, you know, group, a bunch of batch songs. And then um, Dad passed away. Oh, yep. Mel, tell us. Right, right. And so oh. I just took, gosh, I, you know, I would try to pick up the thread, and over the period of a year, I would try to work on the record, and I just couldn't do it. It just wasn't happening, you know, no. for about a year. And then, as so often happens, you know, a year and a half later, you start, it's like stepping back from a painting. And you start seeing it a little bit different. And uh, I think the album I ended up making over a period of three, three years, it's sort of like my answer <laughs> to you with this question. It kind of, I think it improved from that time that I was almost forced to take off. You know what I mean? It was just, yeah. it was almost, and I'd never done one. Like usually you get in, you knock them out, right? Mm-hmm. Even if that 
happens over six months. But to record an album in bits and pieces kind of over a period of three years, that's not real normal. But, you know, I was listening to music one day, kind of just goofing off, and sometimes I'll kind of, I call it research. You know, I'll just follow a thread. I'll, I'll start listening to one band, and then I'll, it'll lead me down a rabbit hole, and I'll end up several albums later, I'll find something that I didn't know about. Anyway, I ran across the Katie Lang album that I had kind of missed, you know. I'm a huge mm-hmm. Katie Lang fan. And this album, I remembered the single, but I never heard the whole record. Uh, she did it with Sis Boom Ball Band, which turns out is a bunch of Nashville guys. Maybe not yeah. completely, but a bunch, it was a bunch of East Nashville guys, which is really funny because I just <laughs> moved to this side of town. Anyway, so I hear this record, and I, it was beautiful, beautiful record. Of course, she's never done anything bad, but um, yeah. anyway, so but 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 the sonic template of it and the 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 it was pretty organic, you know. It wasn't real. It wasn't as lush as some of her previous records. And anyway, I just went, man, I love that setting that she's, you know, put herself in. And I went, I could really hear the album. The first tracks were a little bit more muscular, for lack of a better way of putting it. They were a little, a little bit more heavy-handed, and and it's good, and I'm glad I have that. But I also thought I need, I want to lighten it up a little bit, and that kind of goes along with a lot of stuff that we do live with the acoustic trio. I'm like, I need to lighten this whole thing up. And anyway, when I heard the Katie Lang record, I went, you know, that's got that nice kind of finesse, that little light touch. Uh, not light emotionally, but, you know, music uh, instrumentally. Anyway, so I I went to uh, All Music and looked at the credits of that album because I was curious. And I saw this one guy's name, Joe Pasapia, and uh, he was all over it. I'm like, okay, who is this cat, right? He played all <laughs> these instruments on it. He wrote, uh, he wrote this, co-wrote the single. He helped engineer it. I mean, his... Uh, and I, I went to Facebook, and I looked him up, and <laughs> here he is. He's a Nashville guy. He lives around the corner from me, like I could practically I throw a rock and hit his I house. And he has this great studio, this incredible studio. And Joe's worked with not just Katie Lang, uh, and he toured with her for a while. Uh, he's with uh, Gusta, and uh, he worked with Drew Holcomb, and he worked with... Uh, uh, ben Full Spa. He's just done. He, he's got this indie indie cred, indie street cred. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just really. And then I went and saw his band at a little place called the Five Spot, and it just blew me away. The musicianship and just blew my mind. And I'm like, I want to work with this guy. And uh, that kind of propelled me into getting the second second part of the record uh, recorded. And then he went back to and. And kind of tweak some of the first saw, uh, sides that we had done, and he put his, he put a lot, uh, he contributed to the original sides that we had cut earlier. So it just all, it all unfolded the way it was supposed to, I, I suppose. You know, it just it, uh, was a, it was a long and winding road. Sort of like that answer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I love, I love long answers. <laughs> no, it's great because uh, we get to hear the the history of you know how this thing yeah. came apart, and and I I think that's what's changed in the industry is artists are more open now than they have ever been able to be before because of social media and then podcasts and stuff. So we, we appreciate that. Thank you. So I wanted to talk briefly about your uh, radio show called Let My Root Show. You recorded fifty two episodes. Is that uh, are you still going to continue that, or is that just something that's kind of in syndication right now? No, it it's it, they it was just a one off. Like I did it for a year, yeah. and then they 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 kind of rotate out the people, you know. So. Oh, gotcha. And and it just kind of just tells. Uh, I guess you kind of uh, give us stories and then uh, play music that uh, you yeah. grown up with. Yeah, I, and uh, I think uh, gosh, you're giving me a good idea. I just need to do that on my own. <laughs> I just, <laughs> there you go. And I don't need to, you know, nowadays you can just make make up your show. Yeah. You don't have to wait for anybody to ask. <laughs> there you go. Now, now, if we could go, we talked a little bit about 90s country. If I could just, as a fan, ask about my favorite song, uh, 
real quick before we wrap with you. What is the story for Cleopatra, Queen of Denial? That is one of the funniest, most wry country <laughs> songs out there. I love it. I love it. Yeah. What's the story there? And there again, you know, talking about 90s, 90s style of writing, that's a yeah. really simple song, you know, compared mm-hmm. to like the way songs are constructed now. Uh, it's so yeah. simple, you know, a couple of verses in a chorus and, you know, you're out of there. That song came, like a lot of times there'll be an idea that's floating around in your subconscious, you know, and then and then something will trigger you to writing it, to, to write it. And uh, there's a couple of things that had happened. Remember Codaphones? Are you guys old enough to remember Codaphones? Uh, I'm oh, funny. you're killing me. <laughs> I no, no, no. don't recall those. It's your but... answer machine. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I okay. had one. Right. So somebody had left me a joke on my answer machine, and it was lame. It was a lame joke. It was, um, why is Cleopatra the queen of denial? And it, the punchline was like, waka, 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 uh, because she was always telling Mark Antony no. And <laughs> so... Um, which I don't really think that's how that went down. But um, anyway, so there's, that, that was in my mind, that little stupid corny joke. And then, you know, that was about the time that 12-step um, vernacular was really had gotten into the, like, 12-step terms. Everybody was using them, like, you're in denial, you're in denial, and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, being in, yeah. So that was everybody would use those 12-step terms. And uh, and then I ran across a quote that Cher said that a woman had a bad habit of making a deal, a big deal over nothing. Wait a minute. I can't tell, hardly say this without laughing. <laughs> she said women had a bad habit of making a big deal out of nothing and then marrying him. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Cher. <laughs> it sounds yeah. like Cher. Anyway, mm-hmm. so all that was in my brain, and then one night, uh, me and my now ex-husband and a friend of ours went to the Bluebird, and we were in the audience for a writer's night, and the writer's night was stellar, as they always are, and you're, we were feeling all inspired, so we went home, and we wrote one song called, uh, oh, crap, I can't remember it. it anyway, it was um, how, how Gone is Goodbye, and... and mm-hmm. We wrote, we sat there and wrote that song, and we wrote for a couple of hours. I actually recorded that. And then usually you're exhausted by the time you finish a song. If you finish it top to bottom, you're pretty spent, you know. But but all of a sudden, I just had this surge of energy, and I'm like, no, I think I think I could write something else. And um, and I just started playing with that groove, and I just started. Honest to God, sometimes you just channel them. And it mm-hmm. just kind of fell out. And and it was only supposed to just be a lark. It was a lark. It, we never dreamed that there'd actually be people, you know, at Billy Bob's and Cowboys and their Wranglers and their boots and everybody out there do, do, doing this kind of king cut kind of two-step <laughs> and, you know, line dance. And we never imagined that. It's like sometimes it was hilarious, you know, like we got to have the last laugh because we just wrote it on a lark and and ended up, it wasn't one of my biggest, my highest chart toppers, but it's had longevity and I still sing it in concert. No, I listen to it all the time. That's a great song. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you one more little story that was kind of a neat thing because I'm one of those people that I'll keep writing a song, um, I'll change stuff years later if I decide, you know, it's my, if, you know, if I, if, if it's like, well, I'm going to sound like Bernie Sanders. It's my damn song. I'm going to change it if I want to. <laughs> 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 We'd written a song and I went to, speaking of Billy Bob's, I was playing a show down there in Texas. And it was the early days of my career and they didn't even really have a great backstage area for me to go to the bathroom. So I just went to the regular old bar, ba- you know, the bathroom that everybody else went to after the show. And mm-hmm. that was back before anybody, I didn't need any security or anything. I was just starting out. Anyway, I went in the bathroom and I was coming out of the stall. And this lady goes, oh, my God, I love that new song. And I'm like, oh, thank you so much, Cleopatra. 
And I said, but let me ask you something. I said, you know, she never really figures it out in the space of the song. You never really resolve it. She's, it, she's, she's in denial the entire song. You know, because a lot of songs will have like a happy third verse, you know, where there's some kind of brighter side. And I said, should I make that, should I make that last verse happier? And she goes, oh, no. She says, oh, no, honey, that's real life. Leave it the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> we love. So I never changed yeah. it. That's oh, awesome. my goodness. I love that. And we love you just the way you are. Pam Tillis, thank you so much. This was a pleasure. I uh, I had a blast. I hope everybody goes and gets and gets the new record and uh, enjoys a little bit of your music while we are all in such need of it. Thank you for releasing it, and not delaying it because of everything. This really means yes. a lot that you're out there doing it, putting it out there. It means a lot that you feel that way. Thank you. And stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, much love to everybody out there listening. And and God bless all the people who are, you know, help you know helping each other and and all the you know I'll say it because I got you know somebody somewhere is listening, so I'll use it as an opportunity to say thank you to all the all the people out there on the front lines. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. This was a pleasure. All right, well, let's do it again, guys. Y'all are great. Thank you. Okay, Matt, now I'm dying to know what you wanted to say. <laughs> All right. Well, okay, so when she would tour, and I forget where they were. I don't know if they were in Branson, saw her in Branson, uh, or if she came local, like to the Performing Arts Center in Reading or over in Lancaster, but uh, Pam had a show, and my grandmother... And my grandfather, my grandfather's in a wheelchair, he had a stroke, he's a veteran, he always wears the hat with the pins, if you've seen veterans that have those, wherever he goes, because he's, he just, he, if he's in public, he has to have his hat on, that's just who he is. Sure. So, he, he goes to, they go, and she comes off the stage, now there's a picture, I don't know where it is anymore, I think... Because they moved to an apartment and now my grandfather's on hospice and the whole deal. But there's a picture of her singing to him, holding his hand. Like she came down into the audience and sang them because the handicap section must have been right up front. That's cute. And, and afterwards, she met everybody in the audience, signed a hat and gave it to him. One of her hats and, and gave it to him. So um, I was thinking that she had signed his hat, but then I realized that that wasn't right. But my grandmother has remembered that moment ever since and has loved Pam Tillis ever since that happened because she was took that moment with him. That is a really sweet moment. Now, does your grandma know that we were speaking to her? She will as soon as we hang up here. I forgot to tell her. <laughs> oh, she's going to be mad at you. No, she's not. She'll be very happy. Um, plus, awesome. you know, I never like to jinx it. I don't like to be like, hey, we're going to talk to you. And then it, right. you know, for one reason or another falls through. Right. But that was such a fun, fun interview. Yeah, she she had uh, she was a lot of fun, and uh, I, I love how she was uh, learning to not really learning because I know gardening is one of her favorite hobbies, but she was um, actually able to have time to do that. That's that's always cool to have time to be able to do something that you enjoy, but just haven't had time to do because you're gone all the time. So, kudos mm-hmm. to her for the gardening and uh, for being her husband's taste tester. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am Max's taste tester. I totally relate it's a good position to be in trust me i'm my own taste tester you cook yeah i cook i cooked spaghetti yesterday kid wanted it da- damn with it with your shoulder length hair your hair must get in everything i uh <laughs> usually it's it might i mean i i see white hair so i think that's from one of the dogs but <laughs> <laughs> uh, well you're not a spring chicken anymore there either but no i'm kidding you're still pretty young <laughs> Yeah, I don't even think you're ten years older than me, which is uh, well on uh, the twenty first. I turned thirty six, so there you go. Oh, you're eleven. You, no, you're exactly ten years older than me. You're eighty four. Uh, I was ninety four. There we go. Yeah. So, what do you know? We learn new things every day. I think this is a good place to end it before we reveal too much. <laughs> I'm, for the Music Universe podcast, I'm Matt. And I'm Buddy. Thanks for listening. And keep checking out themusicuniverse.com and our other podcasts. Uh-huh.